This is Lisa with Quilting Block of the Month Facebook group and our second block for May 2020 is Jack in the Box. You've got two sets of colors for it. You've got your background colors which I've got pink in this one and you get your foreground colors which is the teal um, in this one and there's a couple ways that you can do it. You could actually make flying geese right here and then use half square triangles here. I'm going to do the whole block in half square triangles just to make it simpler and easier than trying to make the four flying geese. So what you're going to need is you're going to need for both colors you're going to need two of each color seven by seven inch squares. Then you're going to need four of the foreground colors, the teal in that one pink and mine here, of two and seven eighths inch by five and one quarter inch and then you're going to need in the background color one piece of two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. So again you got one piece two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths, four two and seven eighths by five and a quarter and then you get two, four, two sets of two at seven by seven inch squares. Okay so the first set part of the block that we're going to do is you're going to be making these half square triangles. Each corner has a set of four of them in them so you'll need a total of 16. What we're going to do is the method I'm going to show you is how to make eight at a time so you'll need to repeat this twice. So you'll take one of each of your two colors of seven inch squares and you're going to put them face to face. Now like I said my favorite ruler here is this half inch ruler So, because what you can do is you simply line up the middle with the lines diagonally because you're going to go diagonally across you just take your your marker or your pen and you draw down both sides of it. And now those are the seams that I'm going to do. If you don't have that ruler, what you can do is just use a traditional ruler, make it go from corner to corner. You'll draw your line and now you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch on both sides of these. So this one here you'll use your your machine and your foot to figure out your quarter inch. This one here you're going to just stitch a quarter inch down each side. So when you're done stitching them it's going to look like this. You're going to have basically... Okay so once you've stitched either a quarter of an inch down the line through the center on each side or you've stitched using the other ruler and stitched down on each line you're going to have a cross of stitches. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this into four half square triangles. The important thing here is to make sure that you do not move your, move your fabric while you're cutting or it's going to get everything off. So we're going to cut across this way, we're going to cut across this way, and then we're going to do diagonally from corner to corner. So the easiest way to do is do the half and cutting them in half this direction. You're going to line up there's a crossing of your stitches here and here. Just line your ruler up there and then as you can see on both sides of the ruler it lines up as well. Then just take your rotary cutter, cut it in half, carefully lifting up your ruler and then carefully laying it down you're going to do it the other direction as well. So line up where those stitches cross, make sure that your ruler is straight along both sides and then cut. Now you're going to go between from corner to corner in between your stitching that you did. And so you'll just cut across, carefully lift up again, and you'll go from the other corner, from corner to corner. If you've got a rotary mat, it makes it a lot easier. You can just rotate it. So it's going to cut it into eight pieces. You're going to do this twice so that you have a total of 16. Then you're going to need to square them up. My preferred method is using the quilt in a day half square triangle ruler. And so you basically you line it up. There's a three and seven or two and seven eighths inch line here, one little line up from the three, and you'll line that up with your stitching line across here. And then you just take your rotary cutter and you go across both directions. So I kind of center it so I'm cutting from both sides so that it's squared up. You'll do that to all of them. Then I pr you'll press it open. 
and I usually go to the dark side and then you're going to cut off all your dog ears and you either use a rotary cutter you can grab a pair of scissors and cut them whichever way makes it easiest for you and you'll do that for all 16 triangles half square triangles if you don't have this ruler you basically press it open and then you'll just need to get a ruler and make sure that you know where it is this ruler here is three inches wide so I'm gonna need to crop it down to two and seven eighths now this one doesn't have a diagonal line in it if you've got a ruler that's got a diagonal line in it, it makes it a lot easier but you're gonna line it up and you're gonna trim from one side then you're gonna rotate it around and you're gonna do it from the other side as well and the reasoning for that is you don't want it to be off centered you want the center line here to still be the center of your half square triangle and have the same size side on each piece and that's why this other ruler is so much easier to use um, but you can use whatever rulers you've got and again it's gonna be two and seven eighths inch by two and seven eighths inch square okay here's a better example of squaring up with a ruler this has a diagonal line across it so I can diagonally line up from here down to the corner. I can see my 7 8 inch lines along here, and I can see my 7 8 inch, 7 8 inch of a line at the bottom. So then I could just line up, and I could cut off here, as long as I have a little extra here, but not less. And then the same thing, if I need to rotate it around, line up, since I just trimmed that side, and then trim off the extra here. There's a couple ways you can trim. Uh, square them up, but it's real important to make sure you square them up to make them the accurate accurate size If you use a ruler like this, you're going to clip off your dog ears If you use the other ruler, you're going to have them on there and Just simply take a pair of scissors, take your rotary cutter and cut them off Just so that they're nice and smooth So then when you're done with all of them, you'll have 16 half square triangles at 2 and 7 eighths inch You're going to have a single block of the same size And then you're going to have these 2 and 7 eighths by 5 and a quarter so now it's time to assemble our block. Okay, with your half square triangles, the first part that we're going to do is we're going to create these four corners. They are all identical. They are just rotated one turn as you go around the square. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put two together like this. That kind of looks like a flying geese. Which you could do a flying geese if you would rather. Then you're going to take the other two and you're going to have one facing inward so they look like the you're going to make a square um, in there and then this one you're going to kind of rotate it so you've got like a stripe here almost like a little hook going around like this so you're going to stitch four of these in this manner so what you're going to do is you're going to just stitch these two together and then these two together so once you've stitched those two together go ahead and press your seams and I press your seams so that you can nest the center together so you can put these two together and then you can just nest them and you can clip them pin them however you want to do it both sides and then you're just going to go to your root your sewing machine and you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam allowance there once you've done that you're going to press it open press your seams now i went ahead and pressed mine open on this one just to reduce the bulk here in the middle you can push it all to one side or the other side. It doesn't really matter because when you're stitching them, you're going to be stitching them to a solid piece here. So you're not going to have any seam allowances to match up. So however you want to press them, you can. I think on these, I just pressed one direction or the other. But you're going to repeat this and make a total of four of these squares. Okay, so once you have got all four of these corner blocks put together as you can see they are all identical the next thing you need to do is to go ahead and square them up and make sure that they're five and a quarter by five and a quarter so what you're going to do is you're going to take this if you've got a ruler that's got a diagonal line if you do it with this one that's kind of cuts through the middle it gives you a line to line up which makes it a lot easier and so Mine is a little bit off on this corner here, but otherwise it's five and a quarter inch. If you need to trim off, you can trim off. Just make sure that on your two points here that you don't trim off more than a quarter of an inch because you want to make sure that you still have 
that quarter of an inch seam allowance so you don't lose your points when you sew your blocks together. So the way we're going to assemble them is if you just, we're going to send them like this. So I just start off with all four of these blocks in the same orientation. And they're going to start with that corner. And here's my center. And then this is going to kind of make a cross in the middle. And then you just basically pick one block up, rotate it once. Pick one block up, you're going to rotate it twice. Pick up this one, and you can either rotate it three times, or you could have simply rotated it backwards one time. That way, your half square triangle that has diagonal the others should all be towards the center. So you've got your block laid out. So now what you need to do is just simply go in and assemble it, and you can do it in three basic rows. You can sew these three pieces together, these three pieces, and these three. When you go to press these rows, you need to take into account your middle row as well. If you press both of these inward, then you're going to want to press this one outward. That just makes sure that your seams nest. And I will sew the rows together and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, as you can see, I've got the three rows sewn together. And if you look at the backs to see, to reduce the bulk on these, I went ahead and pushed them towards the solid, towards the middle. And so the middle row here needs the yellow pushed outward towards the dark so that they nest when you put your seams together like this and reduces your bulk and makes it easier to line up. So now you're basically going to fold the top down and stitch and then fold the bottom upward and stitch. Again, it's going to be quarter inch seam allowances on both sides and then you'll press your block. Okay, so I've got the three rows sewn together. And then I went ahead and pressed my seams. On these, I went ahead and pressed them inward because there's less bulk in the middle strip than there is on these other with all the half square triangles just to reduce the bulk. And so there I've got it, my second block uh, for May of Quilting Facebook group. Um, and so here are my two versions of the Jack in the Box. Uh, make sure you take the time to post your blocks on our Facebook group. We would love to see all the different variations and color combinations.